Hello and welcome to the official channel of Concept Creative 101, empowering your journey with practical insights. So dear curious learners, today in this part of the video, we will learn about the discovery of electron. In 1858, Julius Plucker discovered the cathode rays and studied the conduction of electricity in gases at low pressures. Then in 1869, Johann Hittop saw a shadow casting effect which proved that the cathode rays originated from the cathode. William Crookes in 1879 further investigated the cathode rays and found that cathode rays were bent by a magnetic field. Now by the late 1880s, the controversy over the nature of cathode rays had divided the scientists into groups. French and British influenced by Crookes thought that the cathode rays were electrically charged particles while German physicists believed that the rays were waves because they traveled in straight lines. Then comes J.J. Thompson. Thompson's groundbreaking discovery resolved the controversy. With both magnetic and electric field deflections observed, it was clear that cathode rays were negatively charged particles. Let us first now understand the common basis of this experiment. A discharge tube was used. It consists of a cylindrical glass tube, vacuum pump, two metal electrodes were used, that is anode and cathode, connected to a high voltage generator, and air was kept at very low pressure. Now there might be a question coming in your mind, why gas was kept at low pressure? The answer is simple, at low pressure when high potential is applied, the air molecules are easily ionized. Moreover, the properties of the cathode rays such as their direction of travel, their charge could be studied by observing the way they interacted with the gas molecules. Now we will dive into the experiment and understand the properties of the cathode rays. Cathode rays travel in straight lines away from the cathode. A shadow of metallic object placed in the path is cast on the wall opposite to the cathode. This can also be explained when the screen opposite to the cathode is coated with fluorescent material and a hole is created at anode. When a high voltage is applied, it produces glow or scintillation on the screen, which means they travel in straight lines and are charged particles. When a small pinwheel is placed in their path, the blades of the wheel are set in motion. Thus, the cathode rays consist of material particles which have mass and velocity. Cathode rays consist of negatively charged particles because rays deflect towards the positive plate when the tube is exposed to an electric field. Thomson went on and did another experiment to prove that cathode rays contain electrical charge. He placed the magnet and saw that cathode rays were deflected in another direction. If the material of both cathode and anode is changed, we still observe the same cathode rays are produced. Therefore, cathode rays do not depend on the type of material. Thomson proved that the value of charge by mass is always the same. Electrons are thus common universal constituents of all atoms.